And what about you? And on the ramp today we have a 2015 Audi A3 shooting brake. And we've just done a bit of a brake job on it there. And uh, oh, a broken spring at the back. So okay, not an hour spring video, here we go. Well this one's a wee bit different, hopefully. Uh, I have a new tool for doing this style of rear spring. I might do front springs as well, but the tool that I normally use, it sort of doesn't fit in here very well because this spring is recessed in this sort of, the swinging arm here, you know? So the idea of the tool then is it, you don't have to take apart any bolts, which would be that one, that one, and probably that anti-roll bar there as well, to, you know, to get that to swing down. So it's basically an internal spring compressor. So if you watch this channel at all, you'll probably see me using that bio there quite a bit. And that has paid for itself, I don't know how many times over, but that would be like an external, I would class that as an external spring compressor. You know, so that goes on the outside and this thing here goes on the, you know, the outside and it's not going to fit in very well in that uh, design at the back of that car. So an internal spring compressor, I've had this kit here for, I don't know how long, ages, unbranded eBay job. And this, this is sold for Mercs, but you know, the Mercs with very, very long, very tall springs. That was the idea. That was the idea of that. And to be honest with you, on a modern car, it's, it's not much use. You're not going to use that much. I haven't anyway. It doesn't really fit in anything. So the idea is, you know, there's a hole in the bottom of the swinging arm. And, you know, that goes up through the hole and up inside the spring, you know. So that, that there doesn't fit in, in the much these days. So anyway, I got this tool, which is the same sort of idea. Uh, if you notice, these here are sort of closed off here, whereas these are open. So, yeah, I'm not too sure how this is going to work here. I haven't used this before. I've had it a wee while. It's not new, like, you know, but you don't really see much of it about. This is this one here is a Nielsen. Let me see. Laser make this as well. It's pretty much identical. So this is a Nielsen universal coil spring compressor but it's, it's known as an internal spring compressor, and that's the number of it there, CT3538. This is not on the Amazon store. I had a look on Amazon, and, uh, well, I can't find it, but, you know, just Google that number there. If you're interested, and, uh, well, the laser version of this is uh, it's hundreds of pounds anyway, you know. So the idea is, we go up through that hole there, and then uh, there's a wee plastic bung thing, so I'll just pop it out and uh, we'll see. So that tool will fit a hole uh, 30 millimeters uh, in uh, diameter. So yeah, I think we'll be all right there. I think uh, there's, there's a silly version, looks very like that tool, you know, and uh, it, it's a 40 mil job, so the bottom of it is, is 40 mil in diameter. And, uh, well, I don't know what it would fit. Hey, let's see if it's gonna fit up in here. In the hole, now that I've got that wee plastic bung removed. And, yeah, no bar at all. So, at least it fits in the hole. All right, so let's see. I'll pick the appropriate plate. Well, there's really two choices. So that's actually gonna go Come around, come around. That's actually going to go, it's going to end up you know, pressing on there. So we can spin it down a bit, I think. You know, we'll put this one here. See ya. So right, we'll get our thing in from the bottom, see what happens. Right, let's see. All right, okay. Well, we can take that out again, the looks of it. So, that 
latches into the top now. You make sure this thing's caught because it's an open end on it. And uh, that and then the wrong way around. So hold on a minute. I'll edit all that bit out and do this again. Or what do gamers call it whenever they make a mistake? Uh, a review back? Luckily, there's something called flashback. Flashback, that's what it is. Thanks, Lando. Right, well, we'll just leave that in. So, that's not gonna go over that. Ah, right, so that has to go. Right, I need to wind that up in again here. Right. Do an or flashback. Right, you need to screw your ass up a bit more. And then it's gonna go into that. Can you see that? No, you can't. Now there's a notch anyway in the bottom. Let's see now. Uh -huh. Uh, oh, we're getting there. Is this more of a palaver than just taking the bolts out? That's not going to compress that much, you know. Now I've got them in, I can position it. Ah, right, okay. Get that up as far as it'll go up top. Right, another flashback. Right, you need to set it, I think, I think right, <laughs> I'm, I'm not too sure here. What I've done is uh, I need to sunk the, the lower plate down into the, into the recess more. And, uh, well, we'll give her a bit of a tighten up and see what happens from below. Yeah, it would come out. I put a bit of a bar in that. Uh -oh. It'll come out, I think. Let's see now. And there's our broken bit. That's always that wee teal. Oh, that's jammed in there. <laughs> hey, so just rip that out of that. Give that a bit of a clean up. So there's our one full turn, more or less, on the brake. So I was using an impact there to do that, and I normally use an impact in those th uh, that other one as well that I have, the external one. A lot of people say, oh, you're not supposed to use an impact, no. Well, this, this here is like a torque stick that you get with that kit, 
you know and that limits apparently that limits the amount of torque that you're putting on that so it says anyway you know so and the other thing is you may think uh that's its maximum compression there uh it's about just shy of 100 mil 97 mil or something the thing says uh but the thing about it is is the point here is that this this bottom bit is in you know that recess and I'm, I'm able to get that plate down into that recess so it'll it'll lift out you know so that's the thing that the external one won't do you can't get you know in to the recess where this spring is you know the sort of cup type thing so that's the whole sort of idea of it it was my idea not my idea but my thinking on why i purchased this you know So, because you're coming in from the sides, you know, you have to sort of get her lined up. But it's, uh, once you have it lined up, it's not too bad, you know. Right, so we'll have our, our new one squeezed. And uh, I like to give that wee spot a bit of a, a bit of a go on WD-40. So, I'm probably in the road of the camera here, but I'll give her a press down and get her in there. And it's not gonna go in. Bastard. Right, so I've had to resort to, it's well, it's sort of nearly the way I usually do these type of jobs. I've released the, the shock absorber at the bottom there. And I've put my port of power in and uh, got that swinging arm down a wee bit more. This thing here, not too sure where I'm gonna recommend this or not, because it seems to be okay for removing, getting her set up for installing, disaster. So okay, well, it got it in after a lot of flaffing about. Time saver, no. Got it out, great, you know, but we'll have to remember there's a full turn missing at the end of this compared to the new one. So, you know, it cleared it okay. Getting the new one in, obviously it's got the extra turn on it. And I had to drop the, the suspension, which is, you know, sort of the idea of this, you know, saves you from doing. Uh, if you're really stuck in a jam or whatever and you, you know, you had a seized bolt and that 
swing an arm at the back there, uh, you know, you might sort of resort to this. Would I recommend this after using it there? No. I'll tell you the, re the, the big problem that I had with it. And uh, yeah, well, you see the fact that these here have open ends on them? You know, that would, that's a red flag right away to say, that's, uh, that thing will jump out on you, you know? And it, and it sort of did a couple of times. And I tried this a couple of ways. I tried it sort of vertically, you know, putting this in. But what I found was that because you're turning this here and you have these things locked in, you know, because you're, you're, you're turning this, what then happens is that this here tries to spin as well. And it, it sort of, you know, wants to move up the, up the coil spring as you get more tension on it. Yeah, and I'm helping it there, like, but just to demonstrate, you know. So it's very difficult to get a good sort of compression on it. And then, you know, it just keeps falling apart on you. So, as you saw there. So that's basically, it's, uh, it's not the answer, uh, for sure. It's a bit um, light on it, I think, as well, compared to what I would, I would like for, it's, it's not a professional tool, guys, you know. So, uh, there is a version now, there is a version before somebody shouts in and says, oh, that's, that's a crap one you have. There is a version that has a wee sort of thing and that it go, it goes in there, sort of locks it in. And I think there's a wee Allen key or something goes in. I've seen that now, uh, but they're, they're ridiculously expensive for what they are. This here, I think I paid about 70 quid for it, which is more than enough just to try it out, see if it was any good. If you're in a pickle in a jam, you know, and you didn't want to start fighting with bolts and cutting and whatever else, you know, give it a go maybe, but is it going to be my go-to for doing that job? Don't think so. Right, that's enough waffle. Many thanks for watching. All the best and who's this big monster? He's a what? A lion?